Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for coming out and supporting yourself. Trust me when I say it is yourself, because it is you who will suffer the loss of your national insurance pension. It is you who will have to work longer to qualify for your pension. It is you who may end up in Westbury long before your pension is due if these people get their way. You know, they are shameless. Let me start by saying to you that they, these marches, don't mind the Prime Minister said, that there are few people, the few people get on their skin because she was on a press conference. I didn't watch it, but people keep telling me clips. And the clips that I saw, she was misbehaving. Not Prime Minister type material. You know, that's platform material. Maybe that Prime Minister got changed the behavior. She doesn't know when, how, or where. But one of the things that she said troubled me. And I want to tell you exactly what this is. She said that these pension arrangements for the MPs were in place since 1969. That is only half the truth, or a quarter. What in effect happened? In 1969, there were no arrangements for pensions for MPs. The right excellent Earl Walden Barrow decided to put provision in place so that the people who served as MPs would get a pension. But what he did, he synchronized the retirement age of the public service and the pension age for MPs to 55. Because in those days, MPs qualified I'm sorry, the public service qualified for their pensions at age 55. So both were 55. Now we have a situation where the, the civil servants have to go to 68. So they took the civil service pension from 55 to 60 to 65 to 67 and now 68. But while they were doing that, they didn't do a commensurate thing to, to keep in line with what Barrow was doing. They brought their down to 50. At 50, I was a very young, strong man still. I don't need I wouldn't have needed a pension then. Right now at 64, I'm still a young, strong man. So I don't need a pension then either. But no, we have created a situation in Barbados where MPs become leeches. They feed of the public purse. And most of them can't hold a job outside of the House of Assembly. So most of the time when they are out of office, they suffer. Because they're not, they have not equipped themselves with any useful skills. Probably bigger than bottles, but they never want to do that. And as a result, they decided, well, the people got the pay for us. No. If it were you, any of you, who lost your job at age 50, you are well for work. So why should the MP be any different? We created kings and queens and princes. I would appear so. I know they call themselves auntie. But not my, not my auntie. They're my auntie, they're my king, they're my queen, they're my prince. Alright? Trust me when I tell you. All they are out for is looking out for themselves. They are not looking out for you. And people got to stop this nonsense, but we are bees and we are D's and all that kind of nonsense. You are patients. You have hopes, dreams, and aspirations for you and your children. And these people coming in here and thwarting your dreams and aspirations. Now let me explain to you what has happened to some people that I know personally, people that I talk to. People came to me and they said, look, I'm not getting by in the civil service, but my job, and I'm going to have leave. I said, no, hold on, till you qualify for your pension, when you have 500 contributions. And then when they get their 500 contributions, they say, well, let's take all the take on the side there. And the rest is here. Come to England. You know now 
one in the street I spoke to a lady who called me from Connecticut to say that she did exactly that. But she can't come back. So not what happened to her and her five hundred contribution. Stop. No pension. How can you have the pension and pay? You know it is there, waiting for you, and then these villains just come and take it away from you. Because they don't know how to manage this country. And they're using a lot of charlatans to advise them. These charlatans tell them, and there's so many of them, that each of them giving conflicting advice and the Prime Minister following all. Because she herself does not know what to do. She is one of those people who can talk pretty. No substance, just the talk. She doesn't understand what she's talking about. So ready and ready and fight her. And she has too many. And each of them give her conflicting advice and she uses it, gives the advice. And then what happens? We are the best. Then let's talk about the hundred and twenty million dollars that went into four seasons. But I wanted her to talk about also the one point three billion, not million, billion with a B that they took out of national insurance. The actuaries, they always rely on the actuaries, so I can tell you what the actuaries say. The actuaries say that that $1.3 billion taken out of national insurance is what caused the problem. That is what caused the problem. Mayor writing off that $1.3 billion is what put the national insurance into their spin. You pay that money already, you know, and you have it there sitting over there for you. She take it up and write it off. I know what she's asking you to do. She's asking you to pay it back. You paid it already. It is your money. But again, it won't be your money for too long. Trust me when I tell you that this bill that took the age up at 68 did more than that. It also made the National Insurance Fund a state fund. Meaning that the Minister of Finance don't want to get my door with like me. When I disclosed that on the Marcy Week show, and then the following day on Brass Tax, the chairman of the National Insurance come up and bite his tongue and try to talk all over the place. He wasn't making any sense. But he said, oh, that was a mistake and they can fix it. Now you have in this place that they are now passing populated with their lawyers. And this nigga up here who never sent a day in law school. The closest I went to law school is one day my boss sent me the more book from the law, let me know their friend. I never did. Trust me when they tell you that. I never went to law school. And you have people who went to CFL and then they went to law school in Trinidad. And you tell me that I would have to tell them that they make a mistake. They don't mistake. They knew what they were doing. They were taking your money in the slide. And what I say in the slide? The house met the Tuesday. As they normally do. The Senate would meet on Wednesdays. Thursday is cabinet. Friday, nobody meets. Not nobody tired. But they rush to this place and pass a bill to cheat you out of your national insurance money to take to become the overlords of the national insurance fund that is what they did and they did it in the dead of night like thieves in the night they come in like thieves in the night they come in like thieves in the night they don't let the people know what they were doing on our behalf I thought that is not how it's supposed to work. Government is supposed to publish bills in the official gazette to alert the people of this country what they the government is proposing to do on our behalf. This time around, they didn't tell nobody anything. They didn't tell nobody anything. They said they did it the Saturday before, the Friday before, Saturday, Sunday, and two bank holidays, when everybody was walking out. They wanted people to be walking up on the street and jumping like you're stupid. 
not knowing that your lives have been taken away from you. If they call the national church your lifeline, they cut the lifeline. Right now they cut the lifeline for a lot of people. Because what they have also done is to calculate the pension differently. So you would get less. You take longer to get the pension and then you get less. These people's behavior is almost criminal. It's almost criminal. And you walk in the book calling yourself these and these and they know that nonsense. You must look out for you and your children because nobody has it. This government is supposed to be a socialist government taking care of the most vulnerable. You will tax the rich and make sure you get those taxes and spread them on the poor. Now this government from inception has started to tax the poor and spread it among the rich. Yes, reverse Robin Hood. They rob the poor and give to the rich. Don't ever forget. Don't ever forget every time you pay your water bill. Know that you are being taxed for the use of water. As a matter of fact, you're not even taxed for the use of water. You're taxed for having a service. You're taxed for having a fight. Because if you go away for a month, two months, and don't turn on your fight for that month, you're going to pay $45 just for the sake of having that fight in your yard. And if, for some reason, you know a lot of people are losing their jobs, and you can't pay that water bill, what so happen? You go to the water authority and say, my love, things brown, I want to pay a little bit. You know you only pay the taxes first. They make you pay the tax. They pay me water, you some old water, and then if you don't pay the government, they got it all. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, they take the tax you every time. And they tax you for water and sewage. So the sanitation and the sanitation is already taken care of from, from a section. Our taxes were supposed to deal with sanitation, roads, health, education. So when they put another tax on you, you're paid twice for the same purpose. So the land taxes that we paid were supposed to cover those things. Then you have income tax. We have all those taxes and these people got a, a voracious appetite. So they decide that every time they want money they taxes. And the tax people are so is tax. Some people that don't even have a toilet. Are you kidding you? I'll give you a little story. And this is real. You know I represent some sanitation workers. And they reported to me that when picking up the garbage, you know, you put them in the back of the truck, the compactor comes down. They didn't realize that one of those plastic bags was some people's toilet. And when the compactor comes down, the fella gets soaked from head to toe. And then people still pay the sewage tax. Believe it or not, what do you expect for people who don't give a hoop about poor people? They will take care about you at election time and they will give you a red t-shirt and a hundred dollar bill wrap up in it. But like well, last year, but last election, some people only get 50. But <laughs> you are kidding you, some people can't pay that they only get 50. Because you know, even the money that the merchants get and the pay to the workers, they thief off some. They get a hand up with the people and these people thief off some. Even that, even the bribes, they can't wear some of them. Trust me, you don't need these. They need you. You need, you need to be able to sit down home and say the country is being run well. And if you cannot do that, then because those people need to go. They need to go. Tell me if you are satisfied with the way this country is being run. I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think anybody, even their supporters, are satisfied with the way this government is in this day. Pension age was 68 when Tom Adams came into power. He said that was unreasonable. 
and it goes on 65 and it got rid of me in testing. Now, some others might be rolling in this grave. Every time you pass down, they might be rolling here and they're rumbling. They start rolling in the grave now. They see what these people are doing to his country. He bought on 65 and these people try to roll the way back up. But trust me when I tell you people, these people need pressure. They need to be pressurized. We need to let them know that we mean business.